The late 90s were a weird time for LEGO. With sales down across almost all their toys and their most expensive sets really struggling, LEGO decided to try and scale back some of their classic themes like pirates, including making a smaller pirate set that was released in limited markets compared to the previous ones. The mid-90s were generally a good time for pirates and castle, with Dark Forest and all of these amazing sets, including the legendary Skull's Eye Schooner, still being popular with fans many years later. However, today, I'm looking at one of the most maligned of the pirate ship sets. With its sales so poor in its limited 1997 release, that LEGO wouldn't make a new pirate ship set for almost 12 years in the normal system sets. I'm very lucky to actually be able to find this one, since it's almost impossible to find outside of Europe and North America, but today I have the Crossbone Clipper ready to build. With only 141 parts, this set was the smallest pirate ship set LEGO had ever released up until that point. It's got a really eclectic mix of parts, and my copy of the set is in great condition. You can see that the part count is mostly the black parts and some red, with some splashes of yellow and grey. This has a lot of parts that are very hard to find, including this green and black hull. This was obviously only exclusive to this set, and the green colour is so striking, and one of the worst design decisions for this entire set. However, you'll notice that most of the other parts on this are quite standard for the time period, with those new slopes in the red and the yellow colours. This set is actually quite typical of other sets from the time period, and I think other than some of the strange yellows and greens, it actually is a really nicely balanced pirate ship set. You'll notice that some of the parts in here are quite rare, only appearing on this set. This is on top of the fact that all of the light grey and dark grey pieces are now retired colours, including brown and the chrome gold coins. Of course, the sail and flag are extremely valuable parts, and it looks great, the sail. It's just unfortunate that it came on such a small set like this. But you'll only get the full idea of the set once we build it. We were Lego pirates looking for some pillage. Some figured we'd take off to an unsuspecting village. But just as we thought that the gold was in reach, the Imperial Armada pulled right up to the beach. We toppled their mast, they rammed our hull, they even knocked out the key from our skull. They won the battle, they had their fun, but I vow me mateys, this story's not done. Lego Media! Imperial Armada, arr, new sets to collect from Lego system, each set sold separately. And here is the finished ship. This was an easy 10 to 15 minute build, and it's very simple and straightforward. The finished ship measures about one and a half copies of Rush Hour 2 long to about one and a half copies of Rush Hour 2 tall. It definitely looks more impressive from the front, because you can see it has the wider hull and flag, and then the more you start to look around the side, you start to notice that it's actually quite small and stocky from the back. The low part count means they only have just enough space to make a small upper deck, and most of the hull is kept empty, with the wheel sitting right at the bottom of the base, like no other ship. Since I had to order this in the US, this is actually my first set with the non-firing type cannon. In a, Europe and Australia, we have the firing type one, but this was only released in US sets. You can see them side by side here, and how the firing pin is a little longer so that you can actually pull it out. You can also see on the inside that it doesn't have the firing pin alignment, so the small pin and spring on the inside. Funny enough, I think the small build that comes with this cannon is meant to be some sort of stopping mechanism to help with the firing, because it seems a bit too short for the actual non-firing version. The set comes with three very common minifigs, the standard Redbeard and two other pirates. Of course, these are very basic, as all pirates were in this time period. It also comes with quite a few accessories and the barrel with the gold coins. Don't lose this assembly, since it's worth about $100 to $150 on Bricklink. In fact, the part out value of the entire set, in brand new condition, is in the range of around $600 to $1,000, especially due to those very rare exclusive parts on this set. This is definitely one that's become way too valuable over the years, despite it being such an undesirable set. To get a better idea of the scale of this, here is the set next to the Renegade Runner, with a similarly sized small pirate ship. It's actually the other smallest pirate ship set that LEGO made in the 90s. You can see that there's actually quite a few similarities between them, like the construction of the middle of the hull section, and the simpler shape around the back. However, that set did include two main sails, uh, the big large flag, as well as a working compass, more minifigs. It had a lot of extra things going for it, and it would have only cost a little bit more in the same time period. The crossbone clipper does have a small rudder that you can move from the inside, whereas the Renegade Runner doesn't, but there's a lot that it has going for it that makes it a step above the 
crossbone clipper in many ways. Maybe a more fair comparison is to compare it against the bad guy ship from the time period, the Armada flagship. Both these sets are notorious for their incredibly gaudy colour schemes with splashes of green, red and yellow, and I think these two look more similar together compared to the others. You can see how their construction has the same curved slope pieces, there's very similar use of cannons on rails. In fact, this set is actually a really good pair with these two sets together. Both sets re feature really good printed sails as well, and they really are let down by the fact that these are two of the smaller ships. I think a massive Imperial Armada Spanish type ship would have been awesome, as well as something that uses a black hole for classic pirates. Ultimately, the set feels a bit underwhelming compared to the Armada flagship. I think that set does a really good job of concluding a lot for a small space, but it's similarly quite an ugly colour scheme, and I think both sets were sort of struggling with that transition from the 2000s to the 90s. And they're especially underwhelming when you compare it to the Black Seas Barracuda versus the Caribbean Clipper, such a great pair of ships. Here's the Crossbone Clipper next to the most recent pirate set from the time, with the Redbeard Runner. This shares a very similar colour scheme and design type, as well as the very good idea to have the cutouts in the sail to make it look more battle damaged. It also uses the same type of cloth flag, so it's a good way to get that flag again since it's quite an expensive part. And here are all three of the sets that include that classic Redbeard minifig as the captain. You can see how the quality of the ships progressively got worse since 1989, and even though there was more action features and gimmicks added, uh, the ships really sort of went backwards in a lot of ways. Which is a shame, because I think all three sets have something interesting to bring to the table, but the 1989 Pirates wave was really unmatched. It will be good to see how the Skull's Eye Schooner stacks up, which is the last one of Redbeard ships that I don't have, but these three all together show a really broad picture of what the 80s and 90s looked like for LEGO Pirates. Now let's compare it to some modern ones. Here it is next to the Brick Bounty, one of the most recent ones featuring a pirate captain like Redbeard. You can see how next to this ship, the sails are very similar with the crossed swords. It's actually the only other ship that does that, but realistically, scale-wise, it's closer to the rowboat that comes with the set than the actual ship. Here it is next to another modern ship that also has tattered sails, the Silent Mary. This set really looks underwhelming compared to the massive and more realistically toned Silent Mary set. It's also almost big enough to fit on top of the ship. You can see that when you open up the Silent Mary to eat other boats, it actually almost looks like it can fit. Here's another single wide-masted ship, the Viking ship from the 2000s Viking series. This set also has a much wider, longer boat because it's a Viking-themed one, and there is almost enough space on this one as well to fit the crossbone clipper. Overall, this one's more thematic and detailed, and the idea was that this is supposed to be scaled with the Midgard Serpent. This is the most recent ship as of the time of recording, the small little boat included with the Eldorado Fortress in 2023. This ship is the closest in scale than any of the ships I have to the Crossbone Clipper, and it actually looks really nice next to it. But here's a comparison you really wanted to see. Here it is next to the largest LEGO ship ever released, the Imperial Flagship from 2010. Now this set is huge. Each of those main sails is basically the size of the Crossbone Clipper's main sail, and it absolutely dwarfs it. You consider that this is 13 years apart. And yes, the Crossbone Clipper does actually fit on top of this one as well, and it, it, it even seems so small compared to this massive vessel, which is still unmatched in terms of scale by LEGO. Endurance soon, though. Ultimately, I'm glad to have this set to help complete the pirate collection. Now, I'm only a couple sets away, and pretty soon I'll be able to show every single set ever released. But thanks to all of you for your support for some of my videos this year. I really like doing all these vintage videos, and hopefully I can do more in the years to come. I'm also working on some big things with Galador soon, so be sure to stay tuned if that's what you're into. Thanks again.